All right, I'm going to go through uh, the report sheet for uh, the experiment 10 determination of the rate law. All right, so let's go to the top of this page. All right, so at the top of your report sheet, it's going to ask for your unknown number. Uh, it's your table number. The table uh, closest to the chalkboard is table one, then two, three, four, and five. Um, then make sure you have your name and your drawer number. Uh, and then the room temperature, you should have read that from your thermometer. Again, that has to be one decimal. Uh, stock concentrations, uh, what was on the bottle? Your S203 was 0 0.0059, KI was 0 0.20. Your S208 was 0 0.10, and volumes you used for each run, you always had your S203 with 5 mils, KI was 5 mils, you started it with 5 mils for your S208, and the yeast was always 3 milliliters. We used 18 mils on every one of these eight runs. All right, so um, number one says concentration after mixing. So these are the concentrations that are in the bottle. I want to know what is the concentration after we do the mixing. All right, and so um, when you're doing a dilution, it's MV is equal to MV. Uh, so after mixing, the volume was 18, 5, 5, 5, and 3. So uh, when you did your 0.2 molar of KI and you had 5 mils of that, you needed to know the molarity after it was all together with 18 mils. All right, and so when you divide by 18, you get that 0.2 molar after mixing is 0 0.056. If you plug in your 0.1, you get 0 0.028. When you plug in your 0 0.05, you get 0 0.014. All right, and so I already filled those in. I had those uh, filled in previously. So in run one, uh, it said to use 0.2 molar Ki and 0.1 molar S208. All right, but here it says after mixing, so it's 0 0.056, 0 0.028. Run two was 0 0.1 molar versus 0 0.1 molar, and so those are both 0 0.028. And in the third run, it was use the 0 0.1 molar Ki and the 0 0.05 molar S208, so it's 0 0.028, 0 0.014. Uh, I picked out a data sheet, and on this data sheet, uh, the reaction time for run one was 250 seconds, run two, 404 seconds in run three was 1,074 seconds. All right, so now we have to calculate the reaction rate. So the formula for calculating the reaction rate is right here at rate is equal to the disappearance in your concentration of your S2O3 over two times your change in time, the time it took uh, to get the experiment to turn to that blue color. All right, but we need the concentration of S2O3 after mixing. So that again is MV is equal to MV. Your bottle of S2O3, the molarity was 0 0.0059. We use five mils every time and we add a total of 18 mils every time. So your concentration of your S2O3 after mixing was 0 0.0016. In this reaction, when the S2O3 is all used up, when it goes to zero, then we have a buildup of I3 minus, it reacts with the starch and it turns blue. And so when it turns blue, that's when our concentration of our S2O3 is zero. And so S2O3 was a reactant. So we're looking at the disappearance in the concentration of S2O3 over time. In the balanced chemical reaction, it had a coefficient of two. And that's why we're dividing it by two. All right, and so it is a disappearance because it is a reactant. So your final concentration is zero. Your initial concentration calculated over here, 0 0.0016, divided by two. And now I put in the time 250 seconds, which was the time it took for run one. And so that is 3.2 times 10 to the minus six. And so we come up here and we put in our rate is 3.2. Right, it is 3.2 if it lets me write.
3.2 times 10 to the minus 6 and the units, molarity per second. All right, and so the units for that, you must put them, is molarity per second because we have our concentration always is going to be in molarity. And the time, you could have different units of time, uh, but you should be putting that in seconds. And so our units for rate, molarity per second. All right, so when we do the next one, it is exactly the same rate equation. So rate for run two is a negative disappearance of our S2O3 minus two, so final zero minus initial 0 0.0016 divided by two times our second run took 404 seconds. So this is molarity, this is seconds. And so your rate for run two, when you push the buttons, is 2.0 times 10 to the minus six. All right, and then we will do rate three and then we'll plug it in at the top. So rate three, all right, we can simplify, well, yeah. So on top, it is simply 0 0.0016. So when you have minus and a minus, that is a positive. And then two and then run three for this data, it was 1,074 seconds. All right, so your data will be different. You're gonna have uh, the fastest time from run one, and then it's gonna be slower, and then it's gonna be slower again, taking longer. All right, so when you push the buttons on that, you get 7.4 times 10 to the minus seven. Molarity per second. All right, so we'll plug those in. All right, 2.0 times 10 to the minus 6, and 7.4 times 10 to the minus 7. And all those three have units of molarity per second. All right, so number four. So we simply take uh, our number uh, uh, for our reaction rate of 1 and divide by the reaction rate of 2. And then we take 2 and we divide by 3. So... All we got to do is take our numbers that we just found. All right, and so uh, for the first one, we want our rate 1 divided by rate 2. So simply take your numbers, rate 1 and rate 2, and then you divide them. All right, so rate 1 was 3.2 times 10 to the minus 6. All right, rate 1 was 3.2. Rate 2 was 2.0 times 10 to the minus 6. All right, and so when you divide those rates, you get 1.6. Then you're going to take rate 2 divided by rate 3. And when you take rate 2 divided by rate 3, you have 2.0 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 7.4 times 10 to the minus 7. So your numbers will be slightly different. All right, and when you divide that, you get 2.0. Seven. So we will fill in the 1.6 and the 2.7. Right. So when we divided 1 divided by 2, we got the 1.6. And when we took rate 2 and divided by rate 3, we got a 2.7. All right, so that was number 4. Number 5 is to find the reaction order with respect to I minus. All right, so number five, so that was number four. Label that down here as number four. All right, number five. All right, so we are going to uh, take rate one and divide by rate two. And so that is K1, concentration of your I minus from run one raised to the X power. It is your S2O8 minus two concentration raised to the Y power. That is from run one. And then run two is K2, 
i minus raised to the x power for run two, and it is the S2O8 minus two concentration from run two raised to the Y power. All right, so we have our rate one divided by rate two. That number is 1.6. We also know that K is the rate constant. It will only change with temperature. We did not change the temperature. Next time for the next lab, we change the temperature. But for now, those rate constants are the same. We didn't change temperature. And so they are rate constants, they are the same, and they cancel. All right, for our S208, we use the same concentration. So this was the, uh, the 0 0.028 molar, and this was the 0 0.028 molar. It was exactly the same concentration. And so that will cancel out. With your I minus in run one, it was 0 0.056 molar, and for run two, it was 0 0.028 molar. And so when you took your 0 0.056 divided by your 0 0.028, you got two, it was a perfect two, all right? So 2.0 raised to the X power, all right? So now we have to solve for X. In order to solve this equation for X, uh, you have to take the log of both sides. Doesn't matter if you take the LOG log or the LN log, it makes no difference, you will get the same answer for x. All right, so I'm gonna take the ln, natural log, base e, to both on both sides. All right, so it ends up with the ln of 1.6. Now you have the ln of 2.0 raised to the x. So now you have to know your log rules. For your log rules, that brings the x out in front. So you have the ln of 1.6 is equal to x ln 2.0. To get x by itself, you divide both sides by the ln of 2.0. So the ln of 2.0 cancels on this side, and then you get the numbers on your calculator. ln of 1.6, get that answer. ln 2.0, get that answer. Divide those answers. And when you do that, you get an x value of 0.6 eight. All right, so when we go back up to number five and we want the x value, that is for the i minus, that is a 0 0.68. All right, so now it says to round it to the nearest integer. I think on yours it might just say round it. All right, what that means is you round it to the nearest integer. So we're not rounding this to 0 0.7. 0 0.7 is not an integer. All right, the integers are all the negative numbers, zero, all the positive numbers. All right, so this would round to the nearest integer of one, which is what you should get for your uh, order with respect to I minus. It should be a first order. All right, let's do number six. That was five, let's do number six. All right, so number six, we are gonna take our rate two and divide our rate three. All right, so that's K2 over K3, those are constants. All right, so you got your concentration of I minus raised to the X for run two and your S208 minus two raised to the Y for run two and divide that by your I minus concentration that you use for run three raised to the X and your S208 minus two concentration raised to the Y that you used for run three. All right, so we already did our rate two divided by rate three and that was a 2.7. Rate constants, they are constant at constant temperature. We did not change the temperature and those are constant and will cancel. When you look at rate two to rate three and you look at your I minus concentration, both times it was 0 0.028. It was 0 0.028. And so the I minus being exactly the same will cancel. When you look at your concentration of your S2O8, uh, you see in the first one, in run two, we used 0 0.028 molar. And in run three, we used 0 0.014 molar. So we always use the after mixing numbers. 
All right, and when you divide 0 0.028 divided by 0 0.014, it is 2. And so this comes down to 2.0 raised to the y. And so we have to solve it just like we solved the one uh, above. We take the log of both sides. All right, natural log or log base 10, L-O-G log, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use the natural log. So I have the ln of 2.7 is equal to, remember the rule, the y comes out in front, y ln 2.0, divide by both sides by the ln of 2.0. All right, so ln 2.7, get the number, write it down. ln 2.0, get the number, write it down, divide those two, and you get your y value, which is equal to 1.4. All right, so we go back up here and we put in our order with respect to S208 minus 2, and that is a 1.4. All right, so this one was cutting it pretty close. All right, almost the nearest integer was 2, which would have been the wrong answer. Rounded to the nearest integer of 1. All right, and so you should get 1s for both your exponent for your i minus and then your exponent for your s208 minus 2. So now we have determined the uh, rate law by the experiment. So the experimental rate law was determined to be rate is equal to k concentration of i minus raised to the first. I don't normally put the one, but that's the one that we're putting for i minus. The s208 Minus 2, also raised to the first, just like we got in our data. All right, so in number 8, all right, so in number 8, you see that we have the rate. We calculated it. It's number 3. K is a constant. We have to calculate it. Ideally, we it's a constant. We get the same thing three times. We're going to have experimental error, uh, and we're going to then take the average of that. All right, and then your S208 and your I minus concentrations, they are listed there. So we have our rate, we have our concentrations. We simply solve for the K value. All right, so number eight, we'll come down here and do number eight. All right, so we're going we're gonna to do number eight. So we have that the all right. So we have that the rate is equal to k concentration of your i minus raised to the first s two o eight minus two raised to the first. All right, so now we're just going to put in our numbers for run one, then our numbers for run two, and the numbers for run three. And all right, where is well, I tried to put in another page. It didn't quite take it. All right. All right, so we put in our rate, uh, 3.2 times 10 to the minus 6. We are solving for K. Remember, rate is always going to be molarity per second for units. Your concentration is always molarity. The first I minus concentration, run 1, 0 0.056 molar. And our run 1 for the S208 was 0 0.028 molar. And so we have to divide both sides by the 0 0.056 and the 0 0.028 to get our answer. 
All right, and so when you uh, divide that, you get your K is equal to 3.2 times 10, no, that's what we're using, 2.0 times 10 to minus 3. 2.0 times 10 to the minus 3. Now this is a second order reaction. And you should be able to see from the units that you do get 1 over molarity times seconds. So you know that this is first order with I minus, first order with S2, O8 minus 2. And it is second order overall, which means the units for K, 1 over molarity seconds. All right, so we plug that in. And that is a 2.0 times 10 to the minus 3. All right, and that is 1 over molarity times seconds. All right, so we're going to do the same thing for uh, run 2. All right, so for run two, we have rate is equal to K concentration, I minus concentration, S2, O8, minus two. And when you look at uh, the rate for the second reaction, it is 2.0 times 10 to the minus six. We're solving for K, the I minus concentration, 0.028. The S208 minus 2 is also 0.028. All right, so that's molarity. That's molarity. This is molarity per second. Divide by molarity squared, and you end up with the units that you should have for a second order reaction of 1 over molarity times second. So when you take your 2.0 times 10 to the minus 6, divide by point. 028 divided by 0 0.028, you get 2.6 times 10 to the minus 3, 1 over molarity times seconds. All right, so this is for run 2. All right, so for run 3, do the same thing. So your rate is equal to K concentration, I minus concentration, S2, O8, minus 2. All right, so the rate that we calculated for that one was 7.4 times 10 to the minus 7 molarity per second. K is what we're solving for. The I minus concentration that we used was 0.028 molar. The concentration of S2O8 we used was 0.014 molar. All right, so when you divide both sides by 0.028 and 0.014, you get your K value of 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3. And that is, of course, second order, 1 over molarity times seconds. All right, so we will plug those numbers in. All right, so you have your 2.6 times 10 to the minus 3, 1 over molarity times seconds. And you have your 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3, 1 over molarity times seconds. All right, so they weren't exactly the same. This is 2.0, 2.6, 1.9, all times 10 to the minus 3, which is great. All right, so we simply take the average. You add them up, divide by 3, and your average, which is what you're going to use to calculate your unknown, uh, is 2.2 times 10 to the minus 3. And again, the units 1 over molarity times seconds. All right, so now we're going to do our unknown. All right, so the volume of Ki, everybody every time should have used 18 mils, 5 mils of the Ki, whether it was the 0.2 molar, the 0.1 molar, or the unknown Ki. Uh, and then the concentration of your S2O8, everyone should have used the 0.028 molar. That would make it faster. All right, so the data from this student uh, had 380 seconds for run one and 415 for run two. All right, so now we have to calculate the rate. So we're going to calculate the rate exactly the same way that we did for uh, the first three runs. So number 13, calculate the rate. All 
All right, so 13. Rate for unknown. All right, so the equation for rate was, it is the disappearance of your concentration of your S2O3 minus 2, change in your concentration, over 2 times your time change for that reaction to occur. All right, we use the exact same concentration for S2O3 every single time. The final is 0. The initial is 0 0.0016. And then you put 2 in whatever time it took. So the first one was 380 seconds for this data. And so, of course, this is in molarity. That's molarity per second. And so when you divide those two, you get a rate for run one of the unknown to be 2.1 times 10 to the minus 6 molarity per second. All right, for run 2 of the unknown, all right, should have been very similar, all right, we did exactly the same thing twice, all right, so this time our rate was the same in the numerator, everything's the same, concentration uh, of your S2O3 minus 2, changing that concentration over 2 times delta T, the only difference was how much time it took for it to turn blue. All right, and so it is negative final zero minus initial 0 0.0016 molar. And two, the second time the student did the unknown, got 415 seconds. And so the rate for the second one is a 1.9 times 10 to the minus six molarity per second. All right, so we'll fill those numbers in. All right, so the first one was 2.1 times 10 to the minus 6. The second one was 1 1.9 times 10 to the minus 6, and the units are given over here. But we'll put them over here as well, molarity per second, molarity per second for your rate. All right, so now we're going to calculate the Ki concentration in number 14. And this time we're going to use our average K value that we calculated before. That was 13, the one got erased. All right. All right, so 14. So now we have rate is equal to K, concentration of I minus raised to the first, concentration of S2O8 minus 2 raised to the first. We calculated the rate. The rate for the first one here, 2.1 times 10 to the minus 6 molarity per second. The K is the 2.2 we're using the average rate times 10 to the minus 3, 2.2 times 10 to the minus 3. So use your average rate constant K, 2.2 times 10 to the minus 3. Your I minus, that's what we don't know. That's the unknown, unknown Ki. We don't know the concentration. Uh, you could have used the lower concentration of S2O8. It would have taken a lot longer. I think everybody picked the higher concentration, 0 0.028 uh, molar for your S2O8. And then you solve for I minus. All right, and so you take 2.1 times 10 to minus 6, divide by 2.2 times 10 to minus 3, divide by 0 0.028, and the I minus concentration calculated here to two sig figs is a 0 0.034 molar. All right, so we'll do the same thing for run two. So that was run one of the unknown. Run two of the unknown, uh, we had 1.9. So this is run two for the unknown. 
1.9 times 10 to the minus 6 molarity per second. We're using our average K, 2.2 times 10 to the minus 3. It is the unknown concentration of, a, of I minus, and we did exactly the same thing twice. We used the same concentration for the S2O8. All right, so again, 1.9 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 2.2 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 0.028. And you get our I minus concentration for run 2 to be 0 0.031 molar. All right, and before we go and write those down, we are going to undilute this. So this is the diluted number. This is your 0 0.028. Uh, Remember the 0.028, S2O8, that actually came out of a bottle that said 0.1, all right? And so if we wanted to go from 0.08 to 0.1, we would just do that in reverse. What we want to do is take our I minus and go back to what came out of the bottle. And so we do an MV is equal to MV, but we are undiluting it. We want to know what the molarity is of our unknown at five mils because you should have added five mils of your ki unknown we know the molarity 0 0.034 molar when we had it diluted at 18.0 milliliters all right and so you multiply these and then divide both sides by five and so you get your undiluted molarity of your i minus to be 0 0.12 molar. All right, you're going to do the same thing down here. So here is diluted. Diluted I minus. All right, that means that's what it is with 18. And here's undiluted. That means that's what came out of the jar. So the jar, if you did your numbers right, the unknown should have been made to be 0.12 molar. Uh, that's what is in the bottle, if that was the correct answer there. All right, so this one is diluted. And to undilute it, we take MV is equal to MV. And so we want to know what was the concentration of the 5 mils. We know that it is 0. 0.031 molar at 18 mils. So again, 0 0.031 times 18 divided by 5 to get your answer. I know. Let's see. All right, and so when you push the buttons, you get 0.11, if it will ever let me get there. All right, so zero, your molarity. Your molarity is 0 0.11 molar. All right, so this one is your diluted number, and this one is your undiluted molarity of Ki. And we will plug those in. Let's just go. All right, so diluted numbers, that was the 0 0.034. and the 0 0.031. The undiluted numbers, 0 0.12 and 0 0.11, then you take the average, so you add them up, divide by two, and you get 0 0.12 molar. All right, so that's how you do the uh, unknown. All right, so that is page one. That is the difficult page. All right, and so yeah, all these are concentrations in molarity. They are listed on the left there, but you can write them 
uh, as molar. You should put your units with your number. All right, so now the catalyst. So the catalyst, if you can do those, you can do the catalyst. All right. Let's go down to the catalyst. All right, so I put in the data numbers for the catalyst. All right, so we had the same concentrations as run one, 0 0.056, 0 0.028. For the next one, we had the same as run two, 0 0.028, 0 0.028. And for the final catalyst, we use the same as run three, 0 0.028, 0 0.014. All right, so the same concentrations as one, two, three is four, five, and six. All right, and of course the catalyst should have met, been very quick. Uh, the data this student had was 31 seconds, 35 seconds, and 64 seconds. All right, so we have to calculate the reaction rate. All right, so these numbers are going to be much larger because, uh, well, because they were much faster. All right, so again, we're going to find rate the same way. Rate is equal to the disappearance in the concentration of your S2O3 minus 2 over 2 delta T. All right, and so rate for the first one, we put in our numbers, 0 0.0016 divided by 2 and our times. The first one was 31 seconds. All right, and that is molarity per second. Push the buttons on that. And push the buttons on that. I don't know if I push the buttons on that. We'll set them all up, and then I'll push the buttons, get the answers. All right, and so then rate... All right, so this was for run four, this is for run five, 0 0.0016 molarity over two, and the second one was 35 seconds. All right, so the first one, when you uh, do that division, uh, you get a rate of 1.7 times 10 to the minus two molarity per second. When you push the buttons on this one, uh, you get 2.9 times 10 to the minus 2 molarity per second. And then for the, the final catalyst one, 0 0.0016 molar divided by 2, and the time for this one was 64 seconds. And you get 3.1 times 10 to the minus 2 molarity per second second. Uh, let me push those buttons again. Let's see, something's not right there. All right, so you got 0 0.0016 divided by 2, and then divided by 64, and that gives you, oh, that's That is the rate constant number that I have there. All right, fine. If those are wrong, I will erase those. Yes, if you push those buttons, if you're following along with me, yes, those are not the correct numbers for your rates. All right, so let's put in the right numbers. That was our rate constant K numbers. We're not there yet. All right, so the rate is 2.6 times 10 to the minus 5, and 2.3 times 10 to the minus 5, and 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5. That's why those other numbers were close together, and I was like, they shouldn't be that close together because the rates uh, were not that close together. But the rate constant K uh, is going to be much closer together. All right, so the next part is to find the rate constant K, and the numbers I had previously are the numbers. All right, so rate uh, 
All right, we're having some problem here. So, all right, rate is equal to K concentration of I minus concentration S two O eight minus two. All right, so you put in your rate that you got, and that for the first one is 2.6 times 10 to the minus 5. K is what we're solving for. The I minus, same as run 1, 0 0.056 molar. Run 2, or run 1 for S208 was the 0 0.028 molar. And so this is molarity per second. This is molarity, that's molarity. It's still a second order reaction. And you get a 1.7 times 10 to the minus 2, 1 over molarity times seconds. And you plug in for the next one, which is your rate of 2.3 times 10 to the minus 5 molarity per second. You're finding K. Now our concentrations were both 0.028 for run 2 of the catalyst. 0.028, and so your K value here is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 2, 1 over molarity times seconds, and finally, the last one, 3.1, oh, sorry, that's the final answer, all right, so for the last one, for run three of the catalyst, it is a rate of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5. That is equal to K. I minus concentration was 0.028 for that run, and your S208 was the 0.014 molar for that run. All right, and so when you divide both sides by 0.028 and 0.014, you get 3.1 times 10 to the minus 2, 1 over molarity times seconds. All right, and so when we plug all of those in, if we can find out where that's at, okay, we'll get those here. Uh, once you plug all those in, then you have a table and the table is just recopying your numbers. All right, so here is the page with the catalyst. All right, so you put in your numbers that we calculated, 2.6 times 10 to the negative 5 molarity per second, 2.3 times 10 to the minus 5 molarity per second, and 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5 molarity per second, and then your rate, constant K, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 2, uh, so K, second order, 1 over molarity times seconds, and 2.9 times 10 to the minus 2, 1 over molarity times seconds, and 3.1 times 10 to the minus 2, 1 over molarity times seconds. All right, and so then you just go back and you put in all your data here, 250, 404, 1074, 31 seconds, 35 seconds, 64 seconds, uh, and then your rate, and you just recopy your rates that you calculated before, your six rate constants, and then you just write your two uh, average K values. And what you'll notice by putting it in the table, you will see that your rates are much larger for your uh, catalyst and your average K value is also much larger for your catalyst. All right, so that is how you do the calculations for the uh, experiment 10 kinetics.